Okay, my couture crafters, let's get into this card and envelope. This is going to be an interesting one, I think. So I decided to do a square card again, and I decided to do a small square card, the kind that will fit in an envelope that uses an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So I cut this card stock down to 10 by 5, scored it 5, and just folded it in half. This is 110 pound weight card stock from Michaels. I'm using my trusty bone folder, my Teflon bone folder. I don't know what I would do without it. And I'm using these brand new inks. If you buy them, you should use them. And I saw that these were still in plastic, so I thought now would be a great time to use it. This is an Alta New stamp set called Painted Rose. Um, I don't love it, but <laughs> this probably was in the beginning of my Alta New purchases, so I own it. This is a Make Art Station. I was talked about this in my last video. It just arrived from Amazon. I think I paid about 20 bucks for it. It's by Wendy Vecchi, who is um, affiliated with Ranger. And this guy here, I don't know how I ever lived without it. I can see how I would use it in the future. It comes with that magnetic ruler and then those large magnets. Those magnets are really strong, but they also have foam at the bottom, so they're not going to harm your paper. They're not going to snap your fingers, but when I tell you they're strong, they're definitely strong. So here starts the process of me trying to, to use this stamp set. This stamp set is not brand new to me, but it's never been used. This is the first time I took it out, and... It needed some love these stamps were not easy to work with they're not easy to line up in my opinion I am a huge fan of Alta new that's not news but this particular stamp set mm -mm. it gave me all kinds of problems as usual this card took way longer than it should have possibly because I had no idea where I was going that was just my practice sheet so one of the ways to use Alta New stamps is just to, to break them in, is just to start stamping them, using them constantly. Um, I used it constantly. I prepped it with Versamark. I used that eraser that's in the top corner. It just, this stamp set just does not, I don't love it. I don't even love the artwork per se. I don't know why I bought it. It was just probably a layered set. And so I thought, oh, this is cool, but it's not my style. I have a specific style that I look for from Alta New. These are also some newish dye inks. The green ones are brand new. You can tell by the label. The red ones are just, you know, some that I probably have not used very much before. I need to go through all of my Alta New inks and I need to do a color swatch because when I'm pulling colors, I am just lost for what the colors are going to look like. I don't know. They come with a card. They, of course, have the color on them, but I just can't get a good idea of what I want to do and what colors I want to match with what that's my fault but anyway I'm using the stay the station this magnetic station to hold down this card base while I stamp I don't show you guys the process of me layering because I really had to get on top of it which just showed the top of my head way too much so I kind of skip skip through a lot of that again these stamps were super difficult for me to line up and it's supposed to be a loosey-goosey kind of artwork. It's not, you know, dead on like the other ones that I really like. They're nice. So that was what I came up with. And now I'm getting ready to show you guys why I like this transparency. That black grid, you get that from Simon Says Stamp. These stamps are super sticky. And if I were to close the door right now, it would pick up that entire card, which is annoying. So what you do is you put the grid down. You figure out where you want to line up your stamps just by looking straight through it. When you close your door, the stamps stick to the grid. And then you just pull the grid off. Using my VersaFine Clear Black, I think it's Nocturne, ink, which is my favorite ink for stamping sentiments right now. I decided to do that one more time because I didn't love the impression. I claim that I can't stand this stamp set, although after it's finished, I kind of like it. But it was difficult for me to work with and definitely not my favorite artwork, but I still kind of like it. So this is the one, two, three punch board that I tell everybody to buy. I always say buy that version, not the, um, the older version. This one just has more that you can do with it. It let me know that I needed to cut my eight and a half by 11 cardstock down to eight and three eighths. 
square. And here we go. This is kind of what this video is all about. So I'm using the punch board just as usual here, nothing special. Um, I think it wanted me to punch it four and one eighth, I think. You have to look at the guide there. So you just punch and turn and line up that score line and score and punch and score, nice and easy. For this one, it has two different sides. So I use the side that rounds it. You can't see it, but it tells you there on the side which side does what. So I rounded the corners there. Now here's the fun part. I was like, okay, I like to do envelopes that match the card. And I couldn't really think of what I wanted the front to look like. And I knew I wasn't going to bust out those reds on the front of there and try to line it up. And then I thought, well, maybe I will. But let's do it tone on tone in green. So here I'm just marking what side I want the top to be. And then I bust out these stamps. Oh, I pulled out the station again. I don't know what I did without it. Of course, I could have used my Tim Holtz. Um, what's that thing called? It's like the Misty, but it's the Tim Holtz version of the Misty. But instead, I just used this the same way that I did the card. I freehanded this. I didn't use any kind of stamp platform. The Tim Holtz stamp platform, that's what it is. I just freehanded these. And see, I'm, my head's already in the shot. So I used tone on tones. I used the greens. And I thought this was kind of cool. Again, these stamps just, boy. That's my stamp chamois up there that needs to be thrown in the washing machine. Because it is not pretty. I have a black one by Gina K Design somewhere. And I don't show you guys me jumping on top of this. But there we go. Pretty. It coordinates. Okay. Here's the part. That's the reason why I'm shooting this whole video. I want you guys to see that I am measuring from the center of the top. All the way down to the right hand corner. And it measures four and one quarter. So see here, I'm going to show you again. I'm putting it in the top center and I'm measuring down to that right hand corner. And this is a five by five envelope for it's the five by five card. So this one is the envelope that that matches that. So here you can see that it says four and a quarter. What you're going to do is subtract one quarter from that number. So that gives us four. Why a quarter? Because usually when you're doing a liner, which is what we're doing right now, you'd like to see about a quarter of um, border around. So if we subtracted a quarter and we got four, we cut a square down to four inches. This square was cut down to four inches and I used copy paper. I have a better version of copy paper that I should have used and I stamped all over it to match the card, okay? I didn't show that part, but this is just a four inch card now I determined what I wanted the top to be and I rounded that corner because this paper was so thin the envelope punch board didn't love it I should have used a better weight of copy paper I like copy paper because it's not so heavy you probably can use 65 pound weight uh, cardstock or designer paper which is usually a little heavier than copy paper but again I rounded what I thought would be the top and now I'm putting it on the four inch mark so it's a four inch sheet of paper and now I'm putting it at the four inch mark and I'm clicking it, I'm punching it, I'm flipping it over, I'm lining it back up with the four, you can see the four to the left, and I clip it. Now you can see that I've clipped the two sides. So now we're gonna grab our envelope and I take the top and put it down just about a quarter of an inch down. If you see to the left and to the right, there's these little notches. You want to keep your tape runner above those notches, above that line. You only want to tape the first top half, just the top half, guys, because that paper is going to move. And now you line up your paper. This is so pretty. And smooth it down and then go on ahead and fold it. See that paper is going to move a little bit? Increase it. Don't worry about taping down the bottom. You're going to leave that open. Right here, I'm just taping the envelope flaps. I'm not taping that paper down. Otherwise, you're going to cause your paper to collapse or break or whatever. 
You guys, I make custom envelopes and I don't know why I never thought to do a custom liner before that matched the card, but that just really polishes off this card. I think it's just gorgeous. So pretty. It even made me not hate the stamp set as much as I hate the stamp set. That stamp set gave me problems. You guys know I put my sentiments all over the place on the inside of the card. It might be at the top. It might be at the bottom. It might be to the left, to the right. Always something quirky with my cards. If it's not quirky, I didn't do it. Love this thing. Look. It's letting me, I'm not using my Misty, which I usually do when I'm stamping a sentiment. I decided to freehand it, which lets you guys know you don't have to have a Misty to use stamps. But this station here has this ruler, so I was able to line it up and put my head in the shot. That's nice, right? And bam, that's where I decided to place that sentiment. These sentiments have been sitting on my desk, so they're what I've been using. And I think that one says, there's no one quite like you. So the front says, you amaze me. And this little stamp says, there's no one quite like you. And now I'm using the ruler to hold down my card because what? I'm about to bust out my dip pen, you guys. I am so in love with the art of writing these um, notes with these pretty pens. It just does something to me. It just makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. So I'm using the Heidi Swap ink kit. I don't like the pen that comes in that, but I'm tempted to go buy all the sets just so that I can have all the different inks. If I could buy the ink separately, I would. I might be able to. I'm going to check into it. But the kits are 50% off at Joann's, and that makes them $10 kits. And that does not hurt my feelings at all. Matter of fact, I think I used a 20% off things that were already on sale coupon when I first bought this. So it was a great deal. That dip pen is from Amazon. It's not the pen that comes with the Heidi Swap kit. The pen that comes with the Heidi Swap kit is just a little bit too scratchy for me. This one here is just, it moves like a dream over the paper. It doesn't drip or anything. You just dip it in there and start writing. This one is going to Kamanika. So excited. Um, I asked for people to send me their addresses if they ever wanted something that I created. <laughs> they don't get to choose and pick. It's just, hey, if I create something... I've got to get it out of here. So I wrote a little letter. And the way that I clean this is just by taking a baby wipe and just spinning it in there. And then eventually I grab my spray bottle. Because this water, because this ink is uh, water reactive, you can clean it with water. And it just runs right off of there with no problem. Love these inks. And they have a little metallic mica powder in there. So you give them a quick shake before you use them. I encourage you all to run to Joann's and grab a Heidi Swap pen kit I don't know that you're gonna love the pen that comes with it but the process is just beautiful and so that's all my ugly writing now of course if I'm sending it I'm sealing it so I use these beads right here these beads I got from Amazon I think I don't suggest you use these I left this in but there is a boo-boo coming up there is an oops coming and we like to call oops and opportunity presenting suddenly I think that's how you say it yep um <laughs> these just they are more plastic than wax or I burn them or whatever I should have used the ones that I was just looking at but I didn't again this is a spaghetti stick not incense and it's a great way for people with long nails or nail polish to light candles and things so I put those in there and left them to cook for a little while, only a few minutes. And when they were melted, ooh, look pretty. Oh, I just love that. I put just a touch of tape on the sides, just a little bit, so that they don't destroy my liner when they're opening it up. Watch what happens, guys. I should have known when I was swirling it around that something was wrong, but I tried it anyway. And look, ew, it didn't even melt. I don't know what that stuff is that didn't melt. It seems like it was just straight up plastic. So I picked it up. Now this wax is cooling very, very quickly. I realize that's not enough wax to do that large seal. I grab a tiny rubber seal that I have, put Versamark on there so that it releases easily. And it just wasn't cute. I mean, you could see the M on there, but I didn't like it. So I picked it off with my craft pick without ruining. It didn't actually ruin the envelope at all. Not not bad at all I could have put a sticker back there or stamped on it and covered up 
what happened, but I was just going for it. That stuff wouldn't even remelt. I don't know. I'm not in love with it from Amazon. The good wax beads come from waxseals.com or AMZ Deco. The AMZ Deco are the ones that I'm about to use here. I also have glue stick um, wax melts, but I don't like them for just one, just for one seal. If I'm doing a mass production of seals or cards or Christmas cards or something like that, I definitely will use the ones that go in the, the glue gun, which also are great if you're going to be mailing them because they are flexible. This one's pretty flexible too, but this one definitely needs to be hand canceled. You need to take it to your post office and say, can you have this hand canceled? Which means they won't run it through the machines. So these melt like a dream and I chose some kind of pearlescent color. It's not like bronze, but it's pearly. And again, the one with my logo on it is huge. That's a big one. I think that's about an inch and a half. So it can take, it really probably can take three beads. I'm going to have to do another card and see if it can do three. But I used four here. And there's my logo. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I hope you learned about liners. Bye-bye.